right, today we are going to talk a little bit more about Johann Sebastian Bach and just get a little bit of background on his career and where he was coming from as a composer. So, Discussions on Danny's classical composers introduced the term motivic thematic development, but this is something that goes, of course, back before the classical era. And Bach is seen as the greatest master of that technique, the greatest compositional skill of the Baroque period. So he's someone who's regarded as the culminator of the Baroque style. which has the connotation that he was a great assimilator rather than someone who was an innovator of new styles. So he was someone who brought together the different types of compositions that were possible and wrote the greatest examples in those. He was known as a great organist. And he was more famous as a performer than as a composer. So Bach's music um, wasn't widely known by the public until about 100 years after his death. Um, so in 1850, a group of musicians and scholars came together and created this, this group called the Bach Society. So, Bach Gazelle Shots. And so that was a group that goal was to make available to the public all of the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. And so they would <clears throat> periodically then come forth with a new volume. And so this was a group that Brahms belonged to and was uh, very influential on, on Brahms. And then <clears throat> then another hundred years later, in 1950, the most important musicologist associated with Bach scholarship is Schmieder. Yeah, it's like you're on this 
Schmieder's catalog. has 120 works in total. And these are known by their BWV, which stands for Bach Work which just means Bach Work Catalog. So box works are um, designated by their BWV number, and this catalog wasn't chronological, it was according to different genres. So the first 200 or so are his cantatas, and so forth. So during his lifetime, Bach had positions in the two basic types of positions available to professional musicians. So he was Kapellmeister for about 10 years in Weimar. And one thing, Bach never left Germany. He spent his entire life in Germany, so he was not widely traveled. And Kapellmeister is the highest ranking musician in a court, so he was employed by the Ducal Court in Weimar. And then, in Kirtan, from 1718 to 1723, and it was during this era that he wrote a six Brandenburg concerti, so that we listened to the first movement already. But during these years when he was Kapellmeister, he was writing more secular music than <coughs> sacred music. And so, from this curtain period, the first book of the Well-Tempered Clavier He wrote his solo sonatas and partitas for violin during this era. Also, the, the six uh, cello suites, his orchestral suites he wrote. are collections of dances. And we'll talk about the sonata during the section on chamber music. And we're going to look at a couple of trio sonatas by Corelli, who was really important for developing the sonata and also the concerto, the concerto verso. And um, so Bach's sonatas and partitas continue that same type of Baroque sonata structure that Corelli established. So, in 1723, Bach won the most important position in the Protestant world at that time in Germany. when he was appointed the cantor of the St. Thomas Church. And that was in Leipzig. And 
And so this was a post that he wasn't the first choice, he was actually the third choice. They offered it to, uh, to Telemann, who um, turned it down, and then to another uh, composer, his name was Krapner, and then they, they made this famous comment that um, since the first two candidates turned it down, they'll have to offer it to this relatively unknown composer, performer, Johann Sebastian Bach who then made this video uh, one of the most famous appointments ever in the history of music. And so it was during this time that he wrote the majority of his sacred compositions. So over 200 cantatas. So the cantata was a multi-movement work for choir and soloists and orchestra, and they were based on the Lutheran chorales. So the Lutheran chorales were the Protestant equivalent of the Catholic Gregorian chant. So some of the first music that was notated was the music that around 600 AD was um, cataloged by Pope Gregory I and these melodies then that were associated with the worship service in the Christian church um, are referred to as plain chant or Gregorian chant. And they became the basis for composition in the medieval era as well as the Renaissance. So in 1517, that was the, the point that Martin Luther posted his 95 thesis and then the split in the Christian church occurred. And so Martin Luther was the theologian and composer who then um, organized the melodies for the worship service in the uh, Protestant church, and thus now the, the Lutheran church in America. And so uh, Bach was a very devout Lutheran. And so it's really important to understand that aspect of his um, personality because he viewed himself not as, as a great composer. He made the statement that anyone who works as hard as I do could produce the same thing, which of course isn't true. But that's, that's, how he, he, that's how he felt about his music. He felt himself to be a vessel through which this perfect gift of music flowed from God to humanity and that it was a reflection of the glory of God. So what Bach will often write at <clears throat> the end of his cantatas were the initials SDG, which was Soli Deo Gloria. So you want to understand that, you know, with Bach's music, that it's something that he, that he saw as a gift. And so it definitely has a strong emotion, emotional context. But it wasn't the ego-driven emotion of the 19th century romantics. Instead, it was more of a religious devotion. And so that is really important in understanding where Bach was coming from. All right, so in addition to the cantatas, what Bach did the first three years in Leipzig was really amazing. The, um, the church year is organized according to certain seasons, which basically tell the story of, of the Bible. So each Sunday would have three readings, one that would be from the Old Testament, one that would be from the letters of Paul primarily, and then one that would be from one of the four Gospels. And so they would all have a common theme. So Bach composed new music for each Sunday service for the entire 52 weeks and did that for three consecutive years. These services would last up to four hours in length. And so this was a huge, huge amount of music that Bach composed. And um, 
after those first three years in Leipzig, then you took a little time off from trying to keep that kind of schedule. But um, it's it's really amazing the amount of, of, uh, of repertoire that he that he composed. So some of the most important sacred works that he wrote are two settings. of the passion of Christ. And so the passion um, was telling the story of the last few days of Christ's earthly existence, which started with the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which is we celebrate as Palm Sunday, up then to the crucifixion and the death on the cross. So that was where the passion ended. And so um, in Matthew, that was chapters 26 and 27. And so the St. Matthew Passion is a musical setting of that. He also said it a second time to the version of St. John. So those two passions are very, very important. And it was the St. Matthew Passion, which is the work that Felix Mendelssohn organized a performance of in 1829 in Leipzig, which is a landmark historic concert that reintroduced Bach to the public. It was after that concert then that audiences were really interested to hear more of Bach's music. talk more about Mendelssohn um, in a week or so, but uh, Mendelssohn was the music director and the, um, the, the conductor of the Gewandhaus Orchestra in Leipzig, which is still one of the top orchestras in the world. And they presented this performance of the St. Matthew Passion, so that's an important concert to know about. Another very important work is the Mass in B minor. And this was a setting of the ordinary of the Mass, which is the portion of the Mass which was the same every week. And so it was um, a, you know, a liturgical service. And so the ordinary was the basic structural framework of, of the worship service. And then each week would have specific then sections according to that particular week within the church year. And so this is a work that takes about two hours to perform. So it wasn't necessarily meant to be a worship service, although it can be, but it's more of a sacred concert piece. And the setting of the St. Matthew Passion actually was intended for um, the Good Friday service. And so Matthew 26 would be the first hour and a half or so, and then there would be a sermon, and then Matthew 27 would be the, the second half of the service, which would be about two hours. So it was, you know, about four hours in length. And so these huge structures that, that Bach wrote um, were more complex and you know, greater you know, um, sense of, of sophistication and detail than what any other proposed would work. All right, so a couple of other important works to know about from the end of his life. The last work that he wrote is called The Art of Feud. And he was exploring all the different possibilities of contrapuntal writing, what a, a fugue offered. And so it's based on one subject, one theme. And then we have all these different contrapuntists that are just using the different types of thematic manipulation. 